Here we are in sunny San Diego, just wrapping up the 83rd scientific sessions. And I have my colleagues here from the ADA. We're just gonna talk about what like really bowled you over. So uh, Nuha, like what, what was some of the highlights for you? Oh my God, so many, but I think, you know, two that stand out. One is we can actually talk about delaying type one. With the, the with the new time. medication, yeah. I mean, who would have thought? Um, so that's one big thing. And and the other thing is, um, you know, taking care of people with diabetes and liver disease, whether it's identifying people who have liver disease and what can we do so that people with liver disease can live a full and healthy life. Yeah, because it's so common and people don't even realize it. 70% of people with type 2. Wow. Um, Kevin, I know this has been an interesting meeting for you. What, what are some of the, the highlights uh, uh, during your time here? Oh, it's been really remarkable, Bob. And, and you know, the, the words that I'm going to walk away with, I think, are hope and promise. We've had some landmark trials come out with some truly remarkable new drugs that will give hope to millions of people in our country that are overweight and, and struggling with uh, getting more exercise and better nutrition, really the prevention of diabetes. I think that's remarkable. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an amazing story. And, you know, I think, I think one of the big highlights, Marlon, is um, just this explosion of new ways to treat obesity. Yeah, I, I was blown away by, 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 by all the science that came out this year. You know, last year we heard about Sermo, now we had Sermo 2. Uh, you know, we're hearing also too about these new approaches. It's just like the whole field has exploded, and all the excitement around these opportunities to to, to uh, reduce weight for people that struggle with weight issues and the, uh, the, ris the risks around you know obesity and you know, pre-diabetic and also to, during uh, diabetes. Uh, we're seeing now that you can actually ha have significant weight loss and also to Im significantly improve uh, glucose control as well. So I mean, this is it's absolutely amazing. And another thing I really liked. Was I was really looking forward to hearing more about the uh, the uh, stem cell derived beta cell therapy approaches. Yes, a potential cure oh for type gosh. one diabetes. So we, you know we heard like one one person last year. Now we see two people uh, this year, and they have like there are many more that haven't actually met the, the point where they'll report on. But really, fingers crossed. I, I just so think there are now two people, two people that essentially had type people, 1 diabetes and yeah, they don't take insulin these are people with diabetes, had problems with hyperglycemia, all kinds of challenges. And now they receive these, these, these uh, beta cell, uh, uh, stem cell derived beta cell transplants. And no more insulin. I, I mean, I know we don't want to say it, but this is close to a cure. I mean, they're, they're off insulin. Well, well I, have, I have family that have type 1 diabetes. So, I mean, for me, this is, goes beyond goes beyond science. Yeah, right. Incredible. It, it, it yeah. sort of touches yeah. you. It, it in totally a, touches in a, you. In, yeah. a, in a deeper kind yeah. of way. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, the, the, one of the things that I, I, I thought was just so cool uh, at this meeting was the, uh, the innovation challenge where we had all these startup companies come compete to get up on stage um, and tell these incredible pitches of, you know, really game changing uh, solutions for people with diabetes. That's something really new for us at the American Diabetes Association and just getting people to think about different ways of solving problems and that startup companies and entrepreneurs are, are part of all of this. It's, uh, it's, it's exciting. It was incredibly exciting. I, you know, I, I was, when I listened to the, to the, uh, the innovation challenge, it's just the breadth of ideas and the presentations were so cool and so engaging. And then it was, it was thrilling to see all the exposure that they got as well, you know. So there, there were no real losers there because everybody were, was at some level kind of uh, visible and able to kind of be out there in the public domain and kind of people see what their ideas are. So it was really cool. I, I enjoyed that a lot. And having a behavioral intervention, you know, whether there or the themes during the conference, I mean, diabetes distress is a big thing and it was just refreshing. Yeah, really, like diabetes distress is something that, you know, as healthcare professionals, we may not think about it as much, but people living with diabetes Absolutely. experience it all the time. Absolutely, absolutely. And some real interventions that can make a difference. Yes, and is... the conference had many. Yeah, I thought it was a, a great step for the uh, ADA to step up and, and support these young investigators with some truly remarkable uh, uh, inventions and innovations. Uh, 
it's going to be a while before they get their feet on the ground, but what a great start. Yeah, ab absolutely. And, you know, thinking about those young investigators, uh, the, the Pathway Awardees and, and getting up on stage and giving like a TED Talk, uh, uh, they're all remarkable individuals. I, you know, the thing is, I think it's so, it's so nice to be able to, to highlight all these brilliant young investigators. And, and that's what we want more of. I mean, we, we need more people, more young, bright, brilliant investors. That's why obviously we're you know, supporting research in that area. We have postdoc, soliciting postdocs and so on. But you know, when you have bright, young investigators on the same stage as like brilliant research, leaders in research at the top of their field, side by side, then you have visibility. They can be there and it's, it's a message to everybody in the audience that they can be there too. And, and really, you know, we saw a lot of this here just at the meetings, the conversations that would happen, the collaborations, you know, uh, uh, you know, th th this is where science happens. Yeah. It's great to see that collaboration. And it's, it's the collaboration of the whole healthcare team that's come together. Uh, we have a, a, a team that has pharmacists and dietitians and educators and physicians and uh, and nurse practitioners, it's wonderful to see a community come together to provide better care. Uh, I'm glad to see the ADA fully supporting that. What was nice too was, was we had also the, you know, we had these great symposia, brilliant people come, you know, we're leaders in the various topic areas. We also had a ton of discussions in the, in the poster sessions. You know, we, we, we also had, you know, oral abstracts. The oral abstracts are where people submit abstracts and, uh, and, and they present. So we kind of gave them opportunity uh, separate from the symposia so they could kind of be there. So these are you know, graduate students, early career people. So, so we really were trying as our best to kind of uh, give more opportunities uh, for engagement and uh, have young investigators, young researchers be front and center at the meeting. Uh, you know, one of the sessions I really uh, enjoyed was about uh, provider resiliency and burnout. You know, the burnout rates are really high. They've been getting higher and higher. And to hear a bunch of solutions uh, to help, uh, uh, because we know that a burnt out uh, clinician delivers, you know, unfortunately not as good care. Uh, and so it's really important that we uh, address that problem. And there was a session that, that I heard a lot of good, good feedback on was that there was just a, a session on uh, communication, language, the use of, use of language. And I think it was uh, with, with uh, providers and their, and their young, young patients. And they had vignettes of what was, uh, you know, showing what was a non-productive negative engagement versus what was a positive engagement. Support not to do it powerful. and how to do it. I heard lots of people were thrilled by that. And actually, these are all online, actually, on demand to be watched. That's wonderful. I, I, I bet you there are people that have had uh, as patients that, that negative experience and then the positive experience. I'm so sure you're right. And we have to recognize COVID was a big hit on our providers. It really did cause a lot of stress in the delivery system. But I'm, I, I'm really happy to see people beginning to focus on how we, how we can get our providers over that, how we can improve their, their interactions and their manner and their behavior. It's just a, a really great way for the ADA to approach uh, comprehensive care and care for the whole person. You know, I'll, I'll just go back to, you know, I, I think one of the big headlines is really gonna be about obesity. And you think from a year ago, where it was the first time they combined two hormones to treat obesity and saw, you know, 22% weight loss. I mean, we've never had anything like that. And now a year later, well, if, if, if two hormones are good, how about three hormones? How about two different hormones? How about the, the original hormone and taking it as a tablet? All of that data came out yeah. here over the last four days. And as well as a small molecule too, you know? I mean, there's so much creativity and ideas and it just spawned this whole amazing growth of, of, of research and science in this area. And so that's gonna to lead to a lot of new New you know, therapies for people, that's for sure. It all starts at ADA play sessions. I mean, you were, you were talking about liver disease and, you know, the, the studies showing, you know, new medication, triple hormone, like nine out of 10 people had their liver fat. Improvement. Very improved. exciting. Yeah. Very exciting. Very exciting for patients. 
thanks so much for sharing all of your insights and wow can you wait until next year i mean like if this was this year we're just it's going to be, be even better next year there's so much happening